Do you get nervous in a doctor's office? You know the white coat syndrome? No worry. If you live near Durham, North Carolina, or any of the other participating cities around the world, you can just take a walk with a doc. Welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. Early morning in the spring can be a beautiful time in Durham, North Carolina, especially at the Greenway beside South Point Mall. Birds chirping, less traffic than usual, and temperatures still pretty comfortable. Stay tight, keep it closed. That was Dr. D. Nice Beaujolais, one of the physicians leading today's walk. Yes, let's follow her advice. Stay tight, keep it close. Other people are also enjoying the Greenway, so we need to stay together. Dr. Beaujolais starts with a short talk on a health topic. Now today, I'd like to talk to you all about the importance of sleep. Most of us think sleep is optional. Unfortunately, it is not. During sleep is a time where your body fixes and repairs itself. You have the four stages of sleep, and in each each stage of sleep, something specific happens. Parts, you're processing memories. Um, Other parts is where your your brain is actually fixing itself. So you really are going to need to sleep. For an adult, you need at least seven to eight hours. Children, the younger you are, the more sleep it is that you're going to require. We asked Dr. Bojolin, what problems might we encounter if we don't get enough sleep? High blood pressure, heart attacks, depression, anxiety, which can lead to suicide. I mean, I actually, unfortunately, had one patient that had a very complicated sleep issue where she wasn't able to sleep for several months. It's very complicated, but she ended up committing suicide. So sleep deprivation is horrible. There's actually been some research that shows a lot of behavioral issues, ADD especially. A great percentage of that is associated with um, sleep issues. Could you tell us uh, what exactly you do, what type of doctor you are? That was Dr. John Duranville, co-leader of today's walk. We'll be talking to him later. But for now, back to Dr. Bojolin. By day. (laughs) By day, I'm an internal medicine doctor. I've been one for over 16 years now. I um, mostly take care of adults that are have chronic illness managing chronic illnesses like diabetes, hypertension, COPD, anything adult and chronic. Usually most of the patients I take care of are a grocery list of medications, grocery list of complications. They've had multiple heart attacks. Most of them are on oxygen. It's very complicated patients as an internist. That's what I've done for the bulk of my career. And what about Dr. Bojolin's unofficial second specialty? Mine is more um, wellness and wisdom education, and specifically for teens and high school and college age kids, just very specific in teaching them how to really care for their body. I just feel as an internist, what has happened, I noticed that many of the adults that I see, because as an internist, you only see adults, many of them are so stuck in so many unhealthy ways that sometimes, even if they want to change, it's difficult to change because it's, it's so ingrained. And because I do have a lot of experience of being a youth leader, I decided to really focus my attention on educating young people on how to really care for their body before they get caught in the trap of just unhealthy lifestyles. What kind of youth leader experience are we talking about? Oh, I, I mean, a, a church youth leader. I've been a church youth leader since I was, myself was a youth, since I'm 18 years old. I was the head of youth, the youth department, sitting on the school board, on the church board and everything. Okay, everybody. Are you ready to start the walk? Put on your athletic shoes. Maybe bring along some bottled water. And let's go. You can meet some interesting people on a walk like this. For example... I am Carol, Carol Henry Smith. Carol is a strong advocate of plant-based nutrition. In terms of weight loss, we're constantly being told, you know, this diet, that diet. When you're on a plant-based diet, you eat until you're full and satisfied. And as long as you pay attention to the amount of fat in the diet you really don't have to worry about the calories because most of the food they're all loaded with fiber you're going to automatically eat way less you're going to nourish your body more and you're going to automatically lose weight without even 
you know, having to focus on weight loss. Now, the first thing a lot of people would say, well, that sounds good, but what about the protein, the meat? Well, that's also a myth, right? Because we know that on a plant-based diet, you have lots of food that's loaded with protein, your beans, right? A cup of lentils, for example, is about 20 grams of protein. We really don't need as much protein as we have always been told that you need this much protein. We don't. For the average person, 50 to 60 grams of protein a day is more than enough, right? And so if you in a day have, say, a cup or two of lentils, plus all the other things that you're going to eat, you're even going to get more than that 60, 70 grams of protein that you need. So it's very easy to get enough protein on a plant-based diet as long as you plan your meals and focus on getting, you know, fiber-rich food, lots of fruits, um, uh, lots of vegetable, and your your beans, and with some nuts. And what do you do when you're not uh, taking walks? Like, what's your occupation? I'm a physician. Oh, what kind? I'm a geriatrician. Okay, everyone. You may be thinking, walk with a doc is a nice idea, but what about asking the doctor questions? How much can that really help? Well, just ask nephrologist Dr. John Duranville, co-leader of today's walk. Last time we had a walk, we had two walkers who were originally from China. One lived in Raleigh, and the other was visiting her from uh, Shanghai. He was a member of Walk with a Doc, Doc in Shanghai, which was pretty neat. And as we were walking, the woman pulled up a screenshot of her medical report that she received from her doctor in China. And it was all in Chinese characters, but there was some portions of it that was in English and the values were the same values that we use here. And it was a it was an echocardiogram. So it was a special imaging test of her heart. And she was concerned about certain values there. And then when I reviewed it, I realized uh, she didn't need to be overly concerned that uh, what was referenced uh, was something that can be commonly seen in individuals and wouldn't put her at any greater risk. And so I think for her, that was a relief. Now, here's a big question, everybody. Why would a doctor with a busy schedule take time for something like walk with a doc? Here's what Dr. Duranville says. It goes back to why did I become a physician? For me, personally, it was to service people, to help people, to empower people, to educate people. And you find that the opportunities are endless as far as where you can do that. It does not necessarily have to be in a clinic setting, a hospital setting. You want to take advantages of any, you know, community engagement. I want to take advantage of any community engagement to do these things, to empower, to educate, to encourage. And here's what you need to know, everyone. Walk with a Doc takes place once a month in Durham, every third Saturday at 7.30 a.m. Everybody meets near the AMC Theater at South Point Mall. And if you live in Shanghai or somewhere between here and there, you can always find the closest chapter by checking out the map on walkwithadoc.org. Good exercise, good conversation, You'll even learn something and maybe make some new friends. That's Walk with a Doc. This is Steve Eastman reporting from Durham for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com.